Hello and welcome to another video on sorting. Um, kind of got a few questions on, well, can we do it in another language as well? Well, the thing is with these sorting algorithms, they're algorithms. Uh, most languages will have some form of iteration or function, construct, um, variables, and some sort of um, container, like an array or something. So yeah, we, we can use other languages to do the same algorithm. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take the um, bubble and insertion sort and refactor them or, or change them into another language, as in programming language. So let's jump on in to a share of screen. So if we take a look at our sorting at the moment, we've got this bubble sort and insertion sort Java files. I'm going to go open um, Visual Studio Code. Now, let's have a look. So I'm going to show you how straightforward it is to actually change it into another language or another another construct. Well, well, first off, let's 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 try Python. Let's say say you want a uh, I don't know bubble sort dot py using exactly the same algorithm. There's no difference. The the only difference is minor syntax difference. Okay. So let's see if we can open up the uh, bubble sort dot Java. Can we have that just next to each other here? Let's get out of the way. Let's have a look. Um, think we'll be able to do this Let's, yeah so we've got bubble sort there now we don't need this public static stuff uh in python we just need to do a def to define a function okay and we'll say bubble sort and it can take in arr okay so now we've got this this bubble sort now again for the length we can say uh, n is equal to the len of array, which is kind of like the, the Python version of this line here. Here we have a for loop. We can we can do for loops in um, Python in the sense of um, for let's say i in a range. It's a range based for loop that we're currently doing. We'll say from zero. Uh, through to was it n minus one? Or let's have a look, let's see what we're actually doing. Yeah, I'd say n minus one. Okay, so we now have this kind of for loop. Okay, now we just go, well, if, well, I'm sorry, not if, we need an internal for loop, another one. So for j in range. And again, this range is going to be um, zero through, let's take a look at what we've got, n minus i minus one. n minus i minus one. So now we've got our nested loop, exactly the same, same sort of concept. And if the array at j is greater than the array at j plus one. So let's let's do that next. So if arr at j is greater than arr at j plus one, then we want a temp variable. We're just going to do a swap equal to arr at j, and then ARR at J is going to be set equal to ARR at J plus one. Okay. And then we're going to replace ARR at J plus one with temp. It's basically the same algorithm. So there it is in Java, and there it is in Python, okay? Driving-wise, we can say something like this. Just sort of 
start the application doing that. And now that would make a weird sort of thing. So in, in Python, that needs to be in square brackets. Okay, we don't need a semicolon. Right, so then we want to do a bubble sort. on A, okay? Well, we want to print A beforehand, and then we'll print A afterwards, okay? Let's give that a go and see if there's any issues or typos. So for this, we can do Python 3 space bubble sort of .py. So two, three, one, four, seven, six, five, eight, nine, zero, turns into zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exactly the same algorithm. There's no real difference there other than the language and syntax used. I'd say it's still got getting in from the length of the array, still got a for uh, add for loop, still got an inner for loop, still got an if condition and a swap. And we're still using the same data and we're printing it. Then we're calling bubble sort, then we're printing it again. Okay. So so that's that's basically how it would work in Python. Now we can go on further. We could do it in like JavaScript. Let's, let's make a new file called bubble sort dot js. Let's have a look. We could do a couple of ways. Let, I'm gonna say um const bubble sort equals ARR. Okay. Literally the same sort of concept. Now, if we said something like um, ARR dot uh, length, I think that might be an actual method. Here's where you, if you haven't used the language in a while or if you've never used it before, I'd advise to go and look up some docs. So I'm going to say, get length of array JS. I'm just going straight to W3Schools for now, and we'll have a quick look at the documentation just to have a look and see. It's, it's a property, so it's not, it's not a method. So that's great. So we don't need those parentheses. That's the array length. So now I can say, well, um, let n be equal to that. Same again, we can have a for loop. So for, in this case, instead of int, we have a let i equals zero. In fact, here's how close we are to JavaScript. If I literally do this, copy it, it's how ridiculously close we are. I'm just going to literally go like this and refactor it. So not an int, we want to let. Same again, we want to let. And again, let. Uh, again, let. So look, I think we have a winner. Yeah. That, that looks like it should be JavaScript by rights. Yeah. So again, we could do something like, um, I can't remember whether it's going to be A equals that, or let's give it a go. Now let's, let's say A equals that. So it doesn't like that concept. So can we just give it an actual object, uh, an array literal like this? It looks like it's happy. Let's find out. So A is some sort of an array. And then we can do uh, console.log of A. That may actually just give us a uh, memory address. So we may have to do something similar to this. So imagine we literally say, okay, we've got that. I'm gonna I'm gonna refactor this lot here. Copy this. Just for completeness. So now for let there and for a let there. Now it's not going to be system out print 
it's going to be um, console.log. And this probably is going to end with something there. Well, I don't know. We can actually tell it not to put a uh, end line. But for now, it will be fine. It'll be slightly different. Let's see how we get on. Um, Don't know if that needs to be anything there to be honest, but let's let's just do it. Okay, minimal sort of stuff there. That system out needs to be a console log, doesn't it? And this lot can be kind of back to the beginning area. Have a look. That looks okay. It might have minor issues, but we'll find out in a moment when we run it. Let's do node bubble sort dot JS. We got a problem. What what did I break? Obviously something goes. Uh system. Oh, I've left a system out print line, didn't notice that. Console.log. I'm not expecting that to be the only problem actually, but we'll we'll see. Okay, so we've got unsorted data we've got sorted data it's all done exactly not exactly as in no new lines but we have the unsorted data and sorted data after we've actually done exactly the same thing so i that the only real difference here is the uh, let instead of int so we've got quite an interesting sort of analog here of that and that being almost succinctly identical so they, there we've done bubble sort in Python. We've done bubble sort in JavaScript. Okay. Uh, and again, you can do it in like C or C++ and et cetera, et cetera. And you'll find there's minor, there's, the actual algorithm is going to be the same. There'll be minor differences depending upon if there's any syntactical difference or, um, for instance, in Python, the, uh, the array is not considered an array. It's considered what we call a list. It's just a dynamic array, basically, in Python. Um, but same sort of concept. Well, I think that's that's uh, good enough for now. Uh, it's been awesome making these things. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and uh, enjoy more content. Feel free to drop a comment and uh, request any other content. And have a great day. Bye-bye.